We're talking with our best and brightest student entrepreneurs today on GC Conversations. Hello, welcome to GC Conversations, a show where each week we bring in faculty, staff, alumni and friends, and we talk all things Georgia College. Today we've got a real special treat for you and something I really like to focus on, and that's our outstanding students. So I'm joined by three folks today, and I'm going to have them introduce you uh, so, that, so that they can tell you their names, because it'll be hard for me to remember all three of you. So uh, why don't we start here to my left, and for those of you on WRGC 88.3 FM, you're listening to this today, and, and without the visual aid of our, uh, we have some sneakers up front, we'll get to that in a minute, but Jimmy, we'll start with you. I do remember your name, because you're the first one beside me. All right. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Jimmy Gardner. I'm an environmental science major at Georgia College as well as a geology minor. All right. My name is Katie McGuire and I'm a senior management major with a minor in Spanish and international business. Good. My name is Orchid Jackson and I just finished my undergrad in accounting and I'm studying to get my MBA. All right, well fantastic. Thanks everybody for being here. And we're talking really probably more of an entrepreneurial spirit is, is, is even though you're all different majors, uh, but an entrepreneurial spirit is, is really why you're kind of here today. You're all part of the ANAC team. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but uh, so tell me, uh, uh, and for those of you listening on the radio, I've got a bunch of sneakers right in front of me right now, tennis shoes, with different bright colors. And if you've been on our website, you've seen these. Uh, somebody tell me about this and what this is all about. Let's start it with that. I think, Katie, you're going to talk about that? Yes. Um, these are made from a tr traditional Peruvian fabric known as manta and they are all handmade in Peru and this small business was started by a woman and her husband and actually the former president of Enactus from last semester is actually from Peru and he discovered these shoes while he was there and had the opportunity to meet the woman and he was really interested in helping her out helping her business expand and so he decided to bring the shoes to the United States to sell them here and so that's what we're doing as part of was one of our projects with Enactus. And so we sell them here to the students or anybody who's interested in them. And with that, we're helping her business grow internationally. And we're also using some of the proceeds to give back to the local community of Milledgeville. Okay, now I'm very interested, first of all, about the color scheme and all that type of thing. Somebody tell me about that. How did this, how did this get started? It's a very lightweight shoe. It's a high top shoe, but it's the first thing you notice is colors, and I've got a, a deer on this one and, and different types of prints, that type of thing. They're very eye-catching, and the name of the shoe is the Fuyupata? Am I saying <laughs> Actually, uh, Puyupata. Okay. It's a, it's a Quechua word. Okay, all right. And uh, tell, me, tell me about the design and, and, and all that type of thing. Uh, what, what is this? Does this represent anything in particular? Who wants to take that? Well, like I said, it's just um, a traditional Peruvian type of fabric. Okay known as Manta, and it just comes in, you know, very bright colors yeah. like this, and they're all unique, and... It's certainly eye-catching. Yes, and, uh, they yeah, are. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, you, 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 you talked about Enactus, and, and I want to kind of switch gears into that. And, and does any, what does Enactus stand for? Jimmy, I'll start with you. Does anybody uh, know that? It used to be SIFE, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, S-I-F-E, which I believe was Students in Free Enterprise, if I, I think that's correct. Um, the name changed to Enactus, which is three syllables. N stands for entrepreneurship, which is kind of the spirit of all the students intertwined in the group. Um, ACT would just be taking action. Um, the, the idea behind it is basically to create businesses, nonprofit organizations that um, we can use to better our communities in the globe, you know, worldwide. Um, US pertains to each individual group and, and basically just saying it's, you know, it's our time to do this and just everybody taking that stand and trying to do what's right. Um, and now you, you're not, you're the non-business major up here, I believe environmental, yes, science. environmental science. How did you get involved in this? Just, it, just um, in, in, a, in an actus and this project and everything, how, how'd you get into this entrepreneurial spirit? Well, actually we just had an interest in the club. I uh, saw them around campus. I got invited to come to one of the meetings and um, after hearing the story of the shoes and everything they were doing, I just kind of fell in love with the idea of the group and it's just kind of been straight on from there. So. Okay. And Orchid, you're, you're, a, you're a graduate student, so yes, you sir. did your undergrad here? Yes, sir. And when did you finish? I finished in 2012. Okay, and, uh, uh, and so you decided to stay here, and you're, you're, I think you said accounting major. Yes, sir. What, what about your grad school major, what area? I'm getting my Master's of Business Administration. Okay, all right. And so were you an undergrad involved in the Enactus program as well? or? Actually, no, I just got into it in my oh. grad year. 
Okay. Yeah. And tell me how you got, yeah, he got invited to a meeting. Is that how that happened with you or not? Um, a little bit differently. I was hooked up with uh, Dr. Fontenot, okay. who's a um, marketing professor here. Okay. And she kind of got me interested in it and um, told me about what it was. Okay. She has a way of getting people involved. You <laughs> she <that>? does. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have, have, have uh, she's one of those people that's hard to tell no to. All right. And, uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So uh, I want to switch gears a little bit now and talk about Enactus in general, because uh, each year there's a national competition. And have any of y'all been to that yet uh, at all? No, we have not. Okay, but you're all, I think, getting ready to go. Is that right. correct? Yes. Okay. There's going to be a regional competition in April. Okay. So, so we'll so all be going to that. And this is your first time, to, but so maybe you don't know all the specifics. Right. But what, you, what you have gathered, tell me about this process. I'm assuming there's some presentation about something about free enterprise, uh, entrepreneurship, that type of thing. Yes, we all um, we do about a 17 to 18 minute presentation in front of a panel of judges, and basically we're just um, showing them our business plan and talking to them about all the projects that we've done and the difference that we've made in our community and basically we're just competing against other teams business plans so uh and and, and again y'all have a bit but is this is this the team here just the three of you or is there more no, no there are about 10 team. of us yeah okay all right and so each person has a role and that type of thing and a, maybe part of the paper to get together the business plan or what have you right. uh what area if i went down the line and said what's your expertise i'll start with you Orchid in this plan, and maybe you hadn't gotten that far yet, but uh, what, what's their expertise or what area are you kind of looking at? Um, well, I really, I really would probably say that I'm mostly organization, like just getting all the little parts of the organization to kind of come together and focus okay. it. Okay, all right, Katie? Um, I guess I would mainly be talking about the shoes and what we're doing to help the small business in Peru. Okay, Jim? Um, I would probably be talking mostly about the sustainability that we're trying to achieve, both uh, environmentally speaking as well as for our business and um, and her business down in Peru. Okay. And creating that sustainability that will create the long-term effects that we're looking for. So uh, uh, most of this project, is it all about the shoes in this particular presentation, or are there other things within this Enactus uh, uh, presentation you're going to do? Is it, or is it, more than, is it just the shoes? It's not just the shoes. Oh, okay. We've we've done a few other few other projects here and there. That's just one of our main ones. But yeah, we've definitely done some other projects. So. Okay, okay. So uh, and I want to come back and talk. We're up against a break. Uh, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about the shoes and and the Enactus and and uh, just again focus on this outstanding project by our students here at Georgia College. And I'll be right back on GC Conversations. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man! If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hello, and welcome back to GC Conversations. I'm your host, Wendell Staten which I forgot to actually tell you on our opening segment today. I apologize for that. So, uh, but we do want to thank you for joining us again on NBC TV4, right here in our Georgia College studios on campus, as well as those listening to us on the radio on WRGC 88.3 FM, our NPR station right here on campus. So we're with our outstanding students um, who are really focusing on this Enactus, which is an uh, entrepreneurial group. And we've got some shoes in front of us, but I want to kind of get back. You, you talked about the involvement with Enactus in general. And a lot of our folks would probably know this group from the farmer's market downtown. So I understand that originally the, pro the, the, the way you purchase the shoes is through your products at the farmer's market. Can somebody kind of address that? Yeah, well, actually, um, before this group was Enactus, it was known as SIFE, Students in Free Enterprise. And one of their projects was to sell herbs at the farmer's market. And they're all organically grown in Dr. Fontenot's garden. And so what we did was we would um, pick the herbs and early in the morning and we'd go to the farmer's market and sell them. And that's how we raised the funds to purchase our first order of shoes. 
Yeah, and I've seen, uh, we had Dr. Fontenot on earlier, and uh, uh, you have a nice package. It, it's uh, it's very well run, and you guys are, I tell you what, you're very consistent in being out there. You're always out there, and you're always uh, uh, pushing the product and doing a great job. So so, so this these profits came up, and then, uh, and so you buy the, these, and then you sell these, and then, uh, and then, and then somehow this leads into the Greenway. So uh, how, how are we talking about that? Who wants to talk about that? I'll talk about right. that. Okay. Um, the Greenway, well, that's where we were selling some of the herbs, but the Greenway is actually going to be the site where we're doing one of our other projects for Enactus. And okay. it's actually a family literacy fund day that we're putting on to, be to benefit the Aspire program. Okay. And um, Kathy Bennett, the director of the Aspire program, actually came to us with the opportunity to host a family literacy fund day at the Greenway and just um, use the money to benefit. Right benefit them. Now we're time sensitive so we don't know when this is going to air but the Greenway project is is when? It's a, it's March 2nd. March 2nd. At 9 30 to 12. Okay uh, and it's down at the Oconee Greenway yes, right sir. here just off of campus and uh, obviously you guys have, have been down there and uh, I want to I want to go into the literary part in a second but I want to come back to the environmental aspect of sustainability so certainly the Greenway would be an interest mm -hmm. that you would have uh, just like this all the things with environment so how does you as a as an entrepreneur uh, you know t tell me about the connection there between sustainability and all those types of things that, that interests you I'm interested in that okay well um, some of the things that interest me is actually the Greenway is situated on the Oconee River which um, I don't know if you know or not but it joins the Okmulgee and that forms the Altamaha River, which is one of the largest watersheds in the state of Georgia. Um, everything that we do here in Milledgeville, north of Milledgeville and Athens, um, all the way down to Dublin, all the cities that are located on this river, they have an impact on every civilization below them on that river. Right. And so things uh, such as the Greenway that creates a green buffer between the actual city of Milledgeville and the river, um, places like that are of great interest to me. They're, um, they're great for the environment. And so I really think that we just need to respect them while we're out there. Uh, there's many things we can do, cleaning up trash, you know, possibly recycling things that are um, involved in our event. Um, but I mean, just the importance of locations like that are significant. And I'm glad that our community has one that we can use so readily and is available to us. Now, I want to go back a little bit more with environmental science. When did you get interested in this? Um, in this whole environment thing? <laughs> I guess actually uh, as a child, yeah. you know, I grew up backpacking with my family and um, I'm from Savannah, Georgia, so my interest and concern for water is sure. naturally, you know, kind of huge. Um, I grew up just, you, my parents couldn't keep me inside. You okay. know, if they grounded me, they made me come inside just because yeah. I wanted to be outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I just, it's always, the environment's always been there for me when I was somewhere, I'd, you know, mentally that wasn't stable or something like that. And right. so just any way that I can give back has really been kind of the life goal sort of dream and again folks uh if you haven't been down to the greenway go down there it's outstanding uh it, it's 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 we are so blessed in our city to have this and there's just more and more projects and things going on and so this this awareness of just having this at the greenway is one good thing for the greenway but now let's go into the literacy uh aspect and orchid i'll come back to you on this uh tell me about this and how how you got involved with this in particular uh, and, and then how this kind of evolved and is kind of mushroomed and, and maybe a little bit more about the day on that Saturday. All right, well, it's March 2nd, um, beginning at 930. And really it just came about when Kathy Bennett came to us with the opportunity to kind of um, add on to the, the week of, or the literacy week that we're having okay, here right. c centered around Dr. Seuss's birthday. Right. And she just came to us with this opportunity. And um, so we, decided to have a Family Literacy Fund Day at the Greenway. And um, we're starting off with a parade. Uh, registration for that is at 9.30. Okay. And it costs $2 to enter. And then you just dress up as your favorite Dr. Seuss character. Absolutely. And join in the parade. And we'll pick winners out of every category. And then after the parade, you can um, take part in carnival games that are going to be held there. And uh, there will be, I'm sure, multiple booths and those types of things right, down yeah. there. And mm -hmm. uh, I know one of the projects we work with is the First Foundation, which provides books for uh, a, a, every week for a child uh, uh, in our county. And, and uh, uh, But again, let's go back to Dr. Seuss. I'm just guessing, like me, you all read a Dr. Seuss book or two in your lifetime. Yeah. I know I have to my children on many times. And uh, or, uh, I guess the first question I'll ask is, who's dressing up as what? Do, all, do we have our character picked out yet? Or am, I, or am I hearing you? No, I'm going to go as I am. I don't know. I, I, we got to get all involved here, right? So I don't know if anybody's picked out their character or not, but that's certainly going to be a fun day. 
and, and again, a, a great way to make reading fun. Uh, and this, the, the whole thing, and I, I kind of want to now shifting gears a little bit more into the whole thing and the joy of reading uh, and, and what that does for people in their imaginations. You talked about being outside and, 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 and that level of contentment in your mind with, with, with the awareness. But, but reading allows us to, to go into a world all of our own that nobody can stop us. We go to the library, we check out a book, man, we read and go anywhere we want. And uh, so uh, a, a, a very interesting project. And what is the ultimate goal of this project, uh, Orchid, in terms of is there a fundraising goal here? I know there's an awareness thing, but are there funds that are going to be raised and going to a, a, a charity or what? Yeah, we're looking to raise funds for the Aspire program and the Early, Learner, Early Learning Center as a whole um, just to provide uniforms and school supplies for them. And what they do is really try to increase literacy rates for the whole family, um, providing after school programs for children and trying to encourage parents to go back and get their, go back to school is just something they focus and on. And this Aspire program is based right here in Baldwin County? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Uh, and uh, well, we're up against another break, they're telling me. And uh, so we're going to come right back and talk more with our entrepreneurial students today on GC Conversations. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive. Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Hello and welcome back to GC Conversations for our last segment today on 88.3 WRGC-FM, also NBC TV4. We thank you for joining us. We've got a, a great show. We're talking entrepreneurship and we're talking about Enactus. We're talking about literacy, a lot of things with our outstanding students. Uh, and I want to go back to this Aspire program, Orchid, and, and tell me a little bit more about that and reading in general is kind of going to there and maybe a little bit more about the day on Saturday uh, at this carnival down at the Greenway. So. First of all, a little bit more about the Aspire program. Where does that, where did that come from? Is that local, regional, or what? Um, the Aspire program is a local okay. community effort that really, um, it starts students off around three and four, getting them ready for preschool and for first grade um, so that they can continue on and learn. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is an area, and this is with me, and I'm a little bit older than you folks, but, uh, you know, as reading has become a little bit less because I can watch television, I can watch a video game, I can do whatever. So reading at a very early age, uh, is people read and then they get into, the, but, but maybe even now they're getting computers and games earlier as opposed to the reading. And the reading takes you, that's why I love reading so much because it allows you to process things and identify the way that you want to do it, not the way that the prepackaged entertainment is coming into your life from that phone or video or whatever it may be. So uh, we, we're certainly um, uh, an excellent program. I know this comes out of the community and schools right. uh, in general, 
and, 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 and the focus of, again, for our, our community and every community around the country to begin to read at an early age. Um, and tell me about some of the other games and things that are going to be happening at, on Saturday at the Greenway. Okay. Well, Saturday we're going to have the Salsa Club performing. We're going to have um, Scrubby the Bear down there. Okay. The fire department's going to come and kind of show the kids about fire safety. Right. And then we're just going to have other organizations that are focused around literacy. And if folks want to sign up for this, can they just show up? They yeah, you can okay. definitely show up. Registration right. is at 930 okay. at the Greenway. Right. And um, if you want any more information about the organization of Enactus or about the shoes, you can email Renee Fontenot, okay. and it's just R-E-N-E-E-F-O-N-T-N-E. T E N O T. All right. Go on our website and type it in. And yeah. I'm sure you can find it. How about that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit now. So if I'm a student at Georgia College or 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 an aspiring student to come to here at Georgia College, how do I get involved in this Enactus program? You know, and uh, you you got invited this year. Uh, you got invited. Is this your first year as well? Yes, okay. it is. Okay. I, I started it last semester. All right. All right. And so how how would I get invited? Just you know, show up to a meeting, when do you do these? Yeah, there are several ways for people to okay. get involved. They can come to our meetings. We have them every Monday at 4.30 in Atkinson 110. Okay. And they can also um, find us on Facebook. We okay. have a Facebook page for our shoes, and it's called Suyana, it's S-U-Y-A-N-A. -A. And it's actually the Quechua word for hope. Okay. So, um, and they can also email Dr. Fontenot. And how, how many folks are typically at this meeting? Is there 10? Is there 50? Or is there what? What do we got? Um, well, right now, we, we still have a pretty small group, okay. so it's it's about 10. Yeah. But so, I, in other words, uh, the reason I ask that, if I come in there, I can get involved. Oh, definitely. And I can get involved definitely. immediately, and yes. I get put to work and get on a project. Yeah, we're going to throw them in head first. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's one of the great things about that. But the whole spirit of Enactus is about entrepreneurialism. Uh, yes. and, and doing things. And, and, and what have you guys kind of gotten out of this? Maybe that going into what you weren't aware of and now you've gotten a little bit more into it and you're excited about it now and leading out. Maybe kind of talk about that process. And Jimmy, I'll, I'll start with you. Maybe talk about that. Maybe what you thought it was and what it is and what are you excited about? Um, when I came into it, I guess I really didn't have any clue what I was coming okay. into. Um, being over in, in Hurdy and being a science major, I kind of just wanted, you know, maybe a little, a little business on my resume, I guess okay. you could say. And I got involved with the group and, and really didn't know what my plans were with it. Um, right. But it didn't take long, you know, as soon as, like I said earlier, as soon as I learned the story about the shoes and, and what the group was trying to achieve, I really just became inspired and, and it, it became less, if, if really nothing to do with the resume builder anymore for me as it is that I just love what we're doing Absolutely. and I just want to be involved. Um, I have a lot of stuff going on and I still find time to just yeah. put everything I can towards it. So. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head for all of us. If you find something you love to do, it's not work. It's a no. passion, you know. And so tell me about your experience with Enactus. Well, I am a business major, okay. but I never really considered being an entrepreneur. But after this experience, um, I'm actually thinking about kind of doing something similar and okay. maybe starting my own nonprofit business right. and, you know, doing something similar, helping out smaller businesses. And so... And Orchid, you're in a little bit different spot than it's your finished school. You're only a year ahead of these folks, but, right. but you, you've taken your MBA. And so uh, tell me about Enactus and how this has impacted you. Um, well, really, it's just, just changed my mindset a lot. Um, it's gotten me more focused on using getting out there in the business world and using um, the po positive power of business just to impact the world in a positive way. All right. Now, let's talk about uh, uh, the, the reality of leaving college. And now you're in grad school, okay. so you're still in at least for another year. Yeah. Okay. What are what are our plans here? You're a um, senior, right? Yes. All right. What are you uh, What are your future plans? Do you know yet? Yes and no. Right. Um, I'm actually graduating in December, okay. so um, I have one more semester here. Right. But um, I'm doing a study abroad in Zambia this summer. A uh, recent kind of interest of mine that's come up has been um, geology. Definitely. I mean, I know that's my minor, but I really didn't have a focus on it early on in school. And um, just the, the more that I learn about the resources and, and just the uses for them, I mean, everything that humans make and use comes from the ground you right. know, beneath our feet. So um, I think there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of bad context that goes in with mining. And, um, and there's really, uh, there's so many regulations out there in place that they're actually a lot of times taking, taking care of what they're doing. I mean, right. there's certain instances where they're not, but it's become kind of a focus of mine. The other would be um, um, water both groundwater and surface water. And uh, I mean, it's just the blood of the earth and, and right. 
the more we can know about it, the better we can treat it. You know, the longer we're going to be around, as long as everything else. So, I believe it was Ben Franklin that said something to the effect <laughs> of, uh, "We don't know how valuable water is until we don't until we don't have it anymore." You yeah. Know? So yeah. All right. In our in our closing uh, minutes here, how about you? What's your next plan? Well, um, I've always been interested in traveling, okay. um, and I'm an international business and Spanish minor, and so I'd like to do something internationally where I'm able to travel and like I said I'm interested in maybe starting a nonprofit right. organization and just helping smaller businesses around the world. So. And Orchid, we'll close it out with you. Well what's, I'm probably just next? looking to get my feet wet and, okay. and get into some organizations and learn how I can impact the world. Okay. Better place. Well one thing I hear is passion uh, and that you guys are all pursuing an area of your, of your, of your interest level uh, and, and you've been able to take your passion find your niche here and then move on. And then now all of you have this wonderful thing of, of moving out and taking this to the world and, and making it a better place. And folks, I talk all the time about the best thing about Georgia College and, and, and you're, seeing, you're seeing it right here. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, and I wish you all the best. And it's been a real treat for our audience today. If you want to get involved with Anactus, come see them on Mondays at 4.30 in Atkinson. Uh, Facebook them. And uh, we thank you for joining us today on GC Conversations. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.